Oh God, the horrors! <laughs> this is your time, Blue. You finally get a drag race yearbook. Yes, <laughs> yes, why she? This is all I've wanted in my career. I know you've been watching every episode religiously. I actually baby. do, especially that one with where you didn't wear eyelashes. I watched that. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Blue asked me not to wear eyelashes for this interview. Peel them off right now. Don't do this to me. <laughs> I actually want a career. Well, <laughs> as it's your first time here, Blue, let me explain how this works, even though I already know you know, but just in case. <laughs> We're going to have a key key about your time on Drag Race UK versus the world. <laughs> and I'm going to be asking you to nominate your fellow queens in our juicy yearbook category. Oh, yeah. The only rule is you can't nominate yourself. Got it? I know the tea. Category is biggest drama queens. <laughs> I'm gonna say Pangina. Insert sad cries here from the back. <laughs> <laughs> Because of that exit. Just that one moment, yeah. I mean, it was very intense to be there. And yeah. I think it was the dramatic moment of the season, right? Yeah, like, tell me, what was that moment like in real life? Like, watching it happen play out? Because you were visibly shocked. And people were like, is that fake? But it was actually my, my physical reaction because mm. I've never been... Like, you watch All Stars and the girls go, Oh, thanks, Rue, for the opportunity. They say a witty catchphrase and they leave the stage. Well, Pangina was clearly there to represent her country and her culture and the people at, back at home. And uh, the difference, or like whenever she was eliminated, um, her, her being just literally physically fell apart. And it was very intense. It was, it was really yeah. emotional because it's not like I did it out of badness or because I didn't like Pangina. I obviously clearly love her as a person. It was just um, really hard to watch someone uh, go through those emotions. But you know what? Uh, and it's really bad of me to say this, but I kind of loved it. <laughs> <laughs> and my next question was like, <laughs> do you regret it? But clearly not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did again tomorrow, bitch. You know it. <laughs> you are... <laughs> so, there's been some crazy speculation from the fans going, all star rules should, should be cut, should be just done. What do you think mm. about that? Well, I mean, I feel like with the fans, you can't win because the reality is, is that they want drama. They want this great TV moment. Everyone still talks about being manila I call it being pungina now, but I mean, <laughs> uh, but like when I'm watching Drag Race, I don't want to be bored. I think sometimes on the new seasons, everyone's too lovey-dovey. Like I think that the way to like break that up is to have like the lipstick moment because it's just very iconic and just it really makes the game more than just being amazing at drag. We also have to be someone that's strategic and that's that's fun. Cutthroat, hydrangea, that's the name, baby. Oh, I love that. That's going on the t-shirt. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I want some money from that, please. <laughs> Category is Shadiest Queen. I'm gonna have to give that to Mo, who from the moment Mo walked in, was reading people to fill. Literally, Cheryl was standing right beside me, being read to fill by Mo, and I was like, Cheryl's my person to read to fill. How dare you come in and do that for me? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you and Mo had a little bit of shade in the early episode. You were very honest about going, you treat me like crap before I was on the show. <laughs> <laughs> you were so honest throughout all of your episodes, uh, but did your honesty get you in trouble on set? It's very Northern Irish to be honest, or maybe just British in general. Like, I just always feel like I need to say how I feel or, or um, you can't bottle this stuff up, you know? And I wanted to have a good connection with Mo, so I thought if we get this out of the way early, then we'll be able to move on from it. I think it didn't get me into too much trouble being honest in the workroom. I think everyone always calls me like the shadiest one, but that's just because I'm the only one that's saying these things to their faces. In the confessionals, everyone else is being a shady 
uh, I was going to say the word charisma, uniqueness, nerve and talent, you know, uh, <laughs> but I'm just the one being it in person. Well, that's true because to be fair, your sisters have nominated you a lot in the shade category. Good. How do you plead? At least I'll win something if I don't win the crown. Well, there we go. I love it. I love the attention. That was my favorite thing about the whole uh, Pangina thing is that everyone was sending me here. I was like, I just love the attention. Listen, love any it. press is good press, baby. <laughs> That's it. Category is best look. Oh yeah, Pangina had the best looks easily on the season. Although if I had to say one, one look that killed me was um, Jimbo's art runway, which wasn't even part of the actual show. But did you see on Instagram? It, yes. it was incredible. And it's the only one piece of drag that I've seen many of these monsters that I would actually wear. Phenomenal. Put a picture of it right here over my face and then cut out my tongue so I can lick it. That's what I want. Editor, I know you can do that. I've seen I've seen what you can do. Honestly, the editor needs a raise. The editor, the gay community lives. So do you, apparently. Famously. I know what to Famously. Famously. So you've had some sickening runways, girl. Baby, you really did the damn thing. What was your favourite look? Oh, well, my polka dot, my polka dot is my favorite. I mm. sat in the hotel room and painted those faces on the arms myself, all four of them. And then what, wanted to recreate the face. It was like my one big makeup moment that I wanted to do on the on the main stage. And I think it went on pretty well. I was pretty proud of it. Oh yeah, it was absolutely amazing. Plus I didn't have to wear a wig and you know how annoying wigs are. Listen, honestly, I do I mean, you wear barely wear hair on your eyes. So <laughs> <laughs> I imagine you don't like wigs either. I'm sick of you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, let me just get through this interview, please. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first year of a interview year. Like, cut the cameras. Cut dead the out. cameras. Let's go. I'm going home. Yeah, let's get Woodrow to do this. <laughs> We're finished. Oh, hello. Okay, so off the runway, we know you were doing the damn thing. But you had an emotional moment in the workroom with Cheryl Ooh. and Juju talking about yeah. gender identity. We love, love, love that moment. What did that moment mean to you, especially watching it back? It meant a lot to me because... Um, one thing that I said to myself about coming onto this season is that I don't want to hold anything back from the audience that uh, might need me. I wanted to really put myself out there for people that are going to be able to watch this back and see, maybe see themselves in me. Because that's really what Drag Race is about that I didn't quite realise the first time around is that how much of a platform it is to be able to help others in, in similar situations to yourself. And I, I love talking about it because uh, even in that conversation, I still was learning about myself. I now consider myself non-binary. I go by they, she, uh, he, uh, and uh, I'm uh, I, I'm living my best life. I don't have to uh, conform to gender norms anymore. And uh, now the whole world knows, even my mum and dad, I can just wear a wee skirt and, uh, you know, just live my best life. <laughs> Frolic around, yes. Frolic around with my bollock out, yes. <laughs> It's honestly a sight. <laughs> you, know <what> I mean? <laughs> you saw it the other night, didn't you? Dad, Almost. Almost. <laughs> That's why I blacked out afterwards. That's what it was. <laughs> Somehow made the interview with Janie. Right. Next category. Category is Class Clown. Oh, class clown. Uh, bag of chips. Absolutely. I mean, people are like, Bag of should have gone home. Bag of should have. We would be missing so much iconic TV. We would have been missing Baga as uh, your woman from Misery. I'm your biggest fan. And her uh, pats, 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 pats. I think that's an iconic line. And her lying down in that sofa with the sunglasses on, just over it. Like that is a reaction meme that I will use for the rest of my life because that is my vibe. Honestly, Baga is just great TV. And she, she knows it, baby. <laughs> oh God, I know. And Baga is like the kind of person that you'll see on TV as this crazy, clown but then in person is actually really sweet and has so much heart and she kind of showed that uh, with the talk about alcoholism and I think that that's really something that you can see in her she's been through a lot of pain and just wants to be loved and hopefully people can see that now and, and love her to bits because I do oh, absolutely bagger we love you babe and she's not a Tory everyone keeps <laughs> saying she's a Tory she's not you know what she is a bastard 
Mass Mass chicken. Mass chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Which pie do you vote for? Bastard. There we go. <laughs> Who's the leader? Uh, you. Yeah, that, thank you very much. I'll start my own party. Don't worry about me. Now, we're going to talk about clownery, baby, and shenanigans and tomfoolery. We need to Fabulous. mention your Austin Powers slash Dr. Evil Snatch game. Oh, yes, baby. How confident were you going into the challenge, knowing you had all of this up your sleeve? Oh, my God. Not really, if I'm honest. Mm. Um, Olympia Avalanche, if you don't know, is on YouTube with her uh, girlfriend, sister, boyfriend, whatever. Uh, um, <laughs> Nova. Uh, she yeah. does these incredible character illusions. And I it was the first person that I thought of I need to ask for all these um, for help with my snatch. And she helped me write all my jokes and my characters and it was incredible. But then whenever I got there, Rue was not buying any of it. Absolutely none of the characters that I brought. Rue told me to do Nadine Coyle as a priest. That's what Rue told me. And I just about shit myself. Cause you know that Rue tries to fuck with the girls when it comes to Snatch Games. She like will send you off in the wrong direction. But I stuck to my guns and uh, it went down really well. I was really proud of it. Um, I was proud of it in the moment, even more so watching it back because I don't know how I did that. Absolutely, and being in there is just a whole different to what you see on TV. What did you think of the new format? <gasps> I loved it. I thought it was camp. Yeah, did you, what did you think of it? No, I thought it was camp as well. I was like, yeah, breathe new life into it. I was yeah. living. I hope they bring it back or like come up with like loads of different new ideas to reinvent the snatch game. So I think it really yeah. works. The family fortunes thing was was a cool idea. And it, uh, Katie Price had no idea what was going on, but good for her. <laughs> she got her airtime. Ah, listen, the door's bimini open. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Category is Miss Congeniality. Oh, has to go to my girl Shares, doesn't it? There's no one else on this season who was as nice as Cheryl. Mm. Janie was very honest, and I'll give her props for that because Janie is a sweetheart and was very honest. Janie was not like trying to backstab people and send dodgy people home, Pagina. Uh, but Cheryl is the is the sweetheart of the season, and uh, and I think I said this in a pop buzz interview the other day. I was like, everyone's pissed about Lemon going home. Everyone's pissed about Jimbo going home and Pagina. What am I freaking Cheryl? They're all like, oh yeah, her elimination's fine. No, no. I was raging. Cheryl was the Rob queen of the season. Rob. We love our sister Cheryl, icon, legend, Divalina. Divalina. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. And I'm like, let's just cut it out already. <laughs> I mean, it's Cheryl. It's never gonna, it's never gonna stop. <laughs> no, it'll be well, on t-shirts for until she's 80 years old. We we stand, we stand. We stand. So blue eyed ranger, going into the final, you have Pretty much the strongest scorecard. How are you feeling about your chances of winning? Oh, I I know I do have the best report card, don't I? Because <laughs> I sent Pangina home. Um, yeah, I, I'm really excited. I, I think um, I'm trying not to get my hopes up too much because the worst thing you do is feel like a winner and then uh, your probably whole world just crumbles down around you. What I'm just trying to do is just play it cool and uh, I'm yeah. excited for what comes. And if it doesn't come, you know, I, I feel like a winner because on my first season, I was very um, much a wallflower in the workroom. I didn't really uh, go out of my way to make myself known. And I feel like this season, if you don't remember me for anything, you'll remember me for going, you know, I like picking up that lipstick. We're going to remember you. <laughs> that's, that's period. Well, speaking of remembering you, it's time for your yearbook quote. <gasps> so anything you want to be remembered by, absolutely anything. I've got one, right. What's the butt crack, you? Like, what's the crack? But I added the word butt well, in. What's so the butt crack? More sexy. Was it sexy? Was that I sexy mean, for you? I'm just happy you have a partner that's all i'm saying <laughs> uh, well thank you what's the butt crack hydrate <laughs> what's the butt crack that's going on a t-shirt too why is she you're making me money today well blue eye stranger thank you so much for this thank chaotic you. interview i <laughs> love you so much i love you lots <laughs> i love these videos i'm so glad i'm on one i Yay! love we love you blue this is it this is your moment this is my moment even if you don't win you're here <laughs> take care lots of love bye, bye. bye.